My name's James Bailey. I'm a consultant haematologist here at the Queen Centre for Oncology and Haematology. So patients can come to haematology via a variety of routes. They might be referred in directly by their general practitioner, but we do also receive quite a lot of referrals from other specialties within the hospital, as well as from the acute services, such as accident and emergency. Most of the work that we do here in the Queen's Centre is focused on patients with cancer and we work as, as two teams within the broader haematology group. One team focusing very much on what we call myeloid disorders which are the acute leukaemias, the myeloproliferative and myelodysplastic disorders and the red cell problems. Um, and then a second team who deal with uh, lymphoid disorders which is lymphomas, myelomas and non-malignant platelet problems. An awful lot of our patients are treated in the outpatient setting of the day unit or even with tablet-based treatments that they might just take at home. Some of our patients of course do need more intensive treatment for which they would be an inpatient on one of the wards. And for those patients we do have a, a named consultant the treatments that we use as an inpatient are generally slightly stronger, more complicated treatments, maybe chemotherapy treatments that are more likely to have side effects so that patients might need additional support and things that we can't safely do in the community setting when patients are coming up and then going back home. All patients with cancer, not just those with blood cancers, are usually managed by a multidisciplinary team or MDT. Um, and that's a, a broader group of specialists, and so not just cancer specialists. The MDT is a really important part of treatment planning. It makes sure that we're always thinking about current treatments, that we're always doing the very best we can for our patients. And it provides a way of checking the quality of individual clinicians. And once a treatment recommendation has been made, we would go back to the patient, we would discuss the recommendation with the patient. Sometimes that might involve patient choice and different recommendations to get a feel for a patient's view on intensive or non-intensive treatment. Consent really is just a check to ensure that we have properly explained the treatment that we're recommending to a patient that they have understood it and appreciate not just the benefits but also the potential risks of any treatment.